here. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Donna Francavilla. I am filling in for Richard Dixon. Not that anybody can fill those shoes. And as one of my Facebook friends says, does this mean that you're not going to be snarky and funny? No, I don't think I'm snarky and funny. But you'll, you can have a dose of Richard again tomorrow when he rejoins you. Um, I'm just filling in for the afternoon, and it's such a treat. Uh, I used to co-host with Leland Whaley some years ago when he was with the station and on occasion would come in with uh, Mark Spud Friedman, and we would debate and talk and have a blast. And um, And Mark and I actually disagreed on everything and until we became friends and then it was a lot more difficult to argue about anything but we have quite a lineup for you this afternoon um, you can listen to us online you can listen to us on the radio you can go to iHeartRadio 1070 WAPI.com and catch us online and uh, you can just listen on 1070 WAPI AM now Here's the lineup. Are you ready for this? It's rather impressive. We have Mark Jackson coming in. He's an honorary consul for Japan, representing Alabama, and he is on his way. He is also one of only six people and the very first Birminghamian to have ever been elected to the Sister Cities Commission. So we're going to find out from him What's ahead from Birmingham on the international stage? In the 2 o'clock hour, we have Heidi Harris. Now, you say, who's Heidi Harris? Well, Heidi is a talk show host out in Las Vegas, and I'm going to introduce you to Heidi because she is fabulous. She's funny, she's witty, and she's opinionated. You're going to love her. During the 3 o'clock hour, we're bringing in Charles Barkley. Now, you know Charles. Charles is always unpredictable and funny and warm and I want to talk to him about several things, and I'm sure you'd love to pick his brain as well. During the 4 o'clock hour, we have Mayor Bell, the mayor of Birmingham. William will be here and talking to us about some of the initiatives that the city is focused on right now. And maybe he'll even tell us about his trip to Italy. He recently was able to be one of only... I think it was either 40 or 60 mayors, something like that, from around, not just around the country, but around the world, who was invited to the Vatican to give some input on climate change and human trafficking uh, at the Vatican in front of the Pope. And I would love to find out how that went, and and even if he had any one-on-one interaction uh, with this amazing world leader. Uh, and then finally, in the, at 4:30, we have uh, Paul DeMarco joining us. Now, Paul is uh, that name may sound familiar to you, and he was a former representative, state representative. He he did run for Congress, did not prevail, but he's still a very savvy guy. And I'm going to get his perspective on some of the politics uh, and what's going on in Montgomery right now. Of course, I walk into the studio and I have no internet connection. <laughs> know what happened. Welcome to the black hole. That oh, is, is it, does it have to be right here? <laughs> does it have to be right now? Oh, my goodness. So I am just meeting Austin for the first time today, and he has been so helpful all weekend. And um, I was texting him last night at 11 o'clock, and uh, you know, nobody wants to text at 11 o'clock on a Sunday night. But you were such a trooper about it, and I really appreciate that. Well, it's my pleasure. So I'm here to help put on as good a show for anybody and everybody that comes on that side of the glass. So, well, I, and yeah, most most appreciated. And I see that <laughs> I just got a text from Mark Jackson. He said here, so it just he'll be here in just a moment. Uh, you will be fascinated by this man. Mark Jackson is not just honorary consul for Japan, but he's also a CEO of an international company, and and. Um, I'm, I just have so many questions I want to ask him, but if you want to ask him questions, you can give a call at 
if you live outside the area, there's a toll-free number, right? 866 is is toll-free, correct? That number is 866-927-1070, 927-1070. At some point, I think Richard Dixon is supposed to call in and harass me. Uh, At least that's what he threatened to do. And I have no doubt that given the opportunity that he will, you know, call in. Come on in, Mark. Mark has just arrived, and uh, we're we're going to get him in the studio into the dead zone, which has no Internet. <laughs> yeah, come on and sit down. I think we're going to get some headphones from you, uh, for you. Um, our Austin, our producer, will take care of that. And uh, thanks so much for coming in and, and uh, being a part of the show. I am going to ask you a few questions as soon as you get some headphones on. Well, go ahead and put the microphone in front of your face and say hello, Mark. Oh, that's great to be here. I'm glad you day found day. it. <laughs> Why is it a great day in Birmingham? Every day is a great day in Birmingham because it is Birmingham. Oh, yeah. wow. I love that. I love a positive attitude. You know, and that kind of positive attitude is pervasive. Don't you love walking through Birmingham and seeing or driving through Birmingham and seeing those signs that are painted on the on the side of brick buildings that say, uh, it's it's nice to have you in Birmingham. You know, if you go back to the 30s, they said the same thing. Really? Yeah. Isn't that polite? That's just that southern charm. Because it's Birmingham. You know, and when you leave the area, and I know you've left Birmingham a time or two to travel, you really come to appreciate the uniqueness of this town and how polite and how nice everybody is. Yes, you're correct. I've lived in a couple other places in the country, but also traveled for business in, oh, all over the world. And I remember whenever we were first starting our, our venture in Manchester, set an office up in Manchester, the cab drivers fought over me because I was the polite American. <laughs> they probably couldn't understand you well, either. They, they could. They could. <laughs> they could. Yes. And you... the, it was funny because I got interviewed with BBC Northwest. Ooh. And they said, oh, Mr. Jackson, what part of Birmingham are you from? I said, I'm not from Birmingham. I'm from Birmingham. Yes. It was, very, it was very interesting to see them try to accentuate the ham instead of Birmingham. It was Birmingham. Birmingham. Exactly. Exactly. Emphasis on the ham. Now, how, what is the international perception of Birmingham. How do the people in the U.K. perceive us? Well, I'll tell you a quick story. It's a sad story, but a story that I think uh, has changed a great deal. My first trip to England was back in, I think, probably early 2004. And just like my first trip to New York, I was looking up everywhere I went in London. What a beautiful place. The town is a buzz. It's fast. Business happens. Mm. Great museums, great hotels, great restaurants. So I hop in a cab, and I said, I need to go to such and such place. And the cab driver said, oh, what part of the states are you from, chap? <laughs> I love and I it. I said, oh, I'm from Alabama. And he said, oh, you don't like the black man there very much, do you? I went, Ooh. oh, sir, shall I tell you? Sure, please tell me. All I know is what happened back in the 60s. I said, let me bring you to current. And what happened in that cab that day, I'm sure we rode around before going to my restaurant, was the fact I got to tell him, a British citizen, how my town and my state has grown up in my lifetime of 53 years since 1962. And whenever he left there, sure, he got a great appreciation for Alabama. And if you and I think about this, Birmingham has grown up from that perspective. Uh, I was born in July of 1962, and I was born and raised in Bluff Park up on top of the mountain, nice, waspy, white Anglo-Saxon community. Mm. And it wasn't until I got my eyes opened with a great, great program here in Birmingham called Leadership Birmingham. Mm -hmm. I was in the best class, I've heard, 2012. (laughs) No, no, mine in 2010 was the best class. (laughs) Sorry, you don't get to own that. (laughs) (laughs) But we got to hear what all happened under Jim Crow, and it was firsthand what we heard. And wow, what a horrible thing, telling people just because the color of your skin, you had to live in a certain area. You couldn't ride on a certain bus, and you couldn't do certain things. 
the leadership that Birmingham has had since then, and I'll concentrate on our current mayor, has totally changed that. You look Hmm. at equality. People are equal. People work together. We spend together. We spend times together. We go to church together. Our cultures, our skin colors may be different. I say it like this. God created every one of us. There's not one of us that was not made by him, but he painted some of us different. He made our eyes different. He made our waistlines different. He made us all different. And therein is the opportunity to teach and learn each other. You know, I want to ask you more questions, mainly like why we're not having these kinds of problems that you see between uh, police officers and, and you know, the, the, the racial issue that we're seeing across the nation. That's not happening here in it's Birmingham not. when you think it would be. You think that given... Birmingham's history, that we might be one of those cities that, that terrible things happen in. But I know there, there may be some people who want to ask you some questions. So I think we have to take a break. Um, when we come back, I would love for you to talk to Mark. I have questions for him, but I know you might have some too. He is the honorary consul for Japan. He is also one of only six people who is uh, on the board of directors of Birmingham International Cities just elected. Congratulations to you. Sister Cities International. Sister Cities International. You're also the chairman of the Sister Cities Project here in Birmingham, Birmingham, correct? And um, he is also an international CEO. I'm Nana Francavilla. I am filling in for Richard Dixon. I'm a CBS radio uh, correspondent and also the owner of Frankly Speaking Communications, a boutique PR agency, and you can 